questions on that? Okay. Then we get to Edison, and he did a lot. Now, Edison, was a, uh, he didn't really believe much in mathematics. You know, the, the one thing they said about Edison was he didn't really want to do much work figuring it out in mathematics. He wanted to trial and error, trial and error, trial and error, everything until uh, he figured it out. And he'd get so busy working, he wouldn't eat, he wouldn't sleep, he wouldn't go get a bath, he would just work, and he was very diligent about that. And he had uh, about 1,200 patents on various things. He did the light bulb, the phonograph, the carbon microphone, the electric chair. He developed DC generator, DC power distribution, and about uh, 1,089 other inventions. And one of the things he's known for the most is the light bulb. Now, a light bulb is an evacuated glass envelope with usually a tungsten filament. And when I pass enough current through that filament, it causes heat. And the heat becomes so hot that it irradiates, it radiates a bright white light. And it has to be in a vacuum because if it wasn't in the vacuum, it would burn up. So you can put this filament with a high current, with a current going through it in a vacuum, and it'll emit a bright white light, but it won't burn out. That's the light bulb. Now you had a question about other kinds of light bulbs? Yes, I did, and uh, I have a couple of other questions as well, but okay. we'll, we'll take one at a time. Uh, there's multiple types of light bulbs. There's the incandescent, there's neon, there's fluorescent, um, then there's the, the new kind. I'm not sure what they're yeah. made of, but you know the ones that they call the green light bulbs and uh -huh. those various things. So I was wondering about the composition of the different ones, you know, which ones are better for which purposes okay. and how long they last. Well, that's a good question. I, uh, you know, the, the, the filament light bulb, of course, is the simplest light bulb, right? You just pass the current through it, it, it glows a bright white, okay? Now, let's talk about the other categories you brought up. First off, we, we're going to talk about the filament. So here's, here's an evacuated glass envelope, and I feed two wires in, and I have a filament, and I connect it to a battery, our AC power source, the light bulb doesn't care. <coughs> Current causes that to glow bright white. Okay? Simplest light bulb. Let's take another one. Let's take a tube, okay, and let's seal it. And let's put a gas in there, like a mercury vapor, or xenon, or krypton, or something. There's a lot of different gases you can put in here. And let's say I have a transformer, okay? And I take it, and I take an AC power source, and I go and feed this to a step-up transformer. <clears throat> I go from a low voltage to a very high voltage. When that happens, the gas in there, the atoms of the gas have an electric current flowing through them. It causes an excitation of the gas. And when an atom of a certain gas gets excited, the electron on the outmost shell of that gas jumps to a higher level. And then it doesn't maintain that orbit, it drops back down. But in the process of dropping back down, it emits what's called a photon of light quanta, or it turns into light. Okay? Now, usually, <clears throat> it's ultraviolet light with these gases. And so what they'll do is they'll put a coating on the inside of these tubes that's a phosphorus. And when the ultraviolet light hits the phosphorus, the phosphorus then gets excited, and it's converted from an ultraviolet light, which you cannot see, into a light you can see, which is also the principle for electrons hitting a pitcher tube with the phosphor dots. And so this would work for a mercury vapor. This would work for a fluorescent light, same principle. And so these new green lights are basically the same size as a light bulb, but they're a fluorescent light. Fluorescent light, <coughs> the gas inside makes ultraviolet, the phosphorus 
turns it into a color of light you can see. Any questions? And of course they got newer ones now called LED, light emitting diode lights. Very efficient. You can take a LED flashlight and it'll run many times longer than a incandescent flashlight because it's converting everything into pure light. This converts mainly into heat. I, I remember seeing a television program about Thomas Edison and I remember that his company promoted one type of current and I don't recall whether it's AC or DC and his competitors promoted the other. Yeah, that was uh, Tesla and Edison and that was called the War of the Currents and Tesla was a genius and Edison was a genius as well but they were two very different kinds of geniuses and I'm getting a little bit ahead of it but it makes a very important answer to your question. Um, when Edison came out he developed the DC generator battery uh, storage and he would supply power to like a few city blocks of DC. Now it's true DC is a little safer than AC but it's really hard to move it much past two or three city blocks because it, since it is flowing through the conductor it attenuates. When you're using AC you can step it way up to a higher voltage, send it down a much smaller wire because the voltage is higher you can have less current but still have the same amount of power and you can send it for very long distances. As a matter of fact if you step it up high enough at a high enough frequency you don't even have to have a wire travel through space. But they had a war. Edison really didn't like AC because he was the one that invented or came up with DC and Edison hired Tesla to help him develop his systems. He came over from uh, Europe and it, it, was, it was bad because they had an agreement that Edison was going to pay him like fifty thousand dollars and after Tesla developed all this stuff for Edison, Edison stiffed him and fired him. And so Tesla went and started his own company and he, was, he went to work for General Electric to develop AC power, which is the only way you could do power like to be successful like we have now. Otherwise, you'd have to have a generator every two or three city blocks. And then it would go out and everybody would have to take care of their own personal generator. Well, uh, in the war of the currents, Edison was trying to convince everybody that AC was dangerous and it would, it would, it would kill you. And so the one thing Edison did invent uh, with AC was the electric chair and mainly the invention of the electric chair was to demonstrate how dangerous AC was and and they, they went around, he went around the country demonstrating the danger of AC and uh, he would often electrocute animals which I thought was sort of sad just to demonstrate how bad AC was and scare everybody away from it and uh, I think the quintessential example of that was Tilly the elephant that was at Long Island. Was it Long Island where they had that big circus? And, and Tilly had been a mistreated elephant and she had killed several of her keepers. They were mean to her. And so Edison set up this demonstration and Edison also invented the film, the first uh, you know, um, motion picture film. And so one of his first, first films was The Death of an Elephant. And so what they did was they tied this elephant up in the middle of a field and they hit it with 60,000 volts of AC, killed the elephant instantly. And you can see smoke and everything. And if you go on the internet, you can watch that video or that film. And I thought that was just weird that they, they had such a feud over AC and DC that Edison would go around killing these animals to demonstrate how dangerous it was. And, uh, you know, but it's sad if you watch that, that uh, film today, you know. And so that's one of those things that, that, uh, you know, there's, there's all kinds of stories of feuds and different ideas between these inventors.